Women's workforce participation has increased steadily from 45% in 1980 to 61% in 2021. But while women have won greater access to paid work, economic and social barriers still hold them back from economic security. Australia has come a long way since the 1950s when conservative norms dictated that women should rely on men's incomes. From the late 1960s, collective action in union and women's movements have allowed women to access paid work and earn their own incomes. But there are still structural barriers holding women back in the workplace. It is still the case that fewer women than men work outside of the home, mostly due to outdated social norms. And it's still the case that women are expected to do most of the unpaid domestic work while raising kids and managing households. But it doesn't have to be this way. In fact, these restrictive gender norms are shaped by governments that refuse to provide affordable care services and adequate workplace supports like paid parental leave and flexible work arrangements for both men and women. As a result, women spend more than double the amount of time doing unpaid work than paid work. This pattern is inverted when it comes to men. And if you look at time spent doing both paid work and unpaid work, the combined workload is indeed higher for women than it is for men. With many women tied up performing unpaid care work, many cannot undertake paid work. In fact, if women participated in the workforce at the same rate as men, there would be almost a million more women working and earning. While some of the outdated social norms confining women's economic choices have progressed, outdated ideas about women's natural abilities have followed them into the workforce. Australia's labour market channels women disproportionately into female-dominated industries like caring services, clerical and administrative work, and hospitality jobs, areas socially considered women's work. These industries where women dominate the workforce are heavily devalued. It's no coincidence that four out of five of the lowest earning industries have a workforce made up of 50% women or more. By comparison, all five of the highest earning industries are male dominated. Where women do work alongside men, they are more likely to be working for them and more likely to be employed in junior or low paid roles, resulting in women facing structural pay discrimination. This is true for all occupational hierarchies across all industries. As women have entered the job market, it's been on inferior terms, working jobs with less security, lower hours, lower pay, and fewer standard entitlements like sick leave and long service leave, holiday and superannuation pay. Insecure work has grown since the 1990s due to the combination of insufficient jobs, aggressive employer profit strategies, and anti-union government policies. Employers have exploited workers, converting quality jobs into lower paying, insecure jobs. Consequently, only around half of all Australian workers hold a standard job. That is a permanent full-time job with leave entitlements. The other 50% now work insecure jobs without stable hours, tenure, income, or access to paid leave. Women have also borne the brunt of declining good jobs and rising insecure work. Only 44% of women's employment is in full-time permanent jobs with access to leave entitlements. Nearly half of women's jobs are part-time, often not by choice, with around one in 10 saying they need more hours of work. Over one third of all women's employment is casual. Problems of low hours, casual work, and underemployment are significantly worse for women than for men. The combined impact of unsupported care work, structural pay discrimination, and insecure work results in an enormous gender wage gap. Employed women earn almost one third less per week on average than men, partly because of lower wages, but also less income from bonuses and overtime, and because they can't get as many hours. So what can be done to improve women's wages, job opportunities, and quality of life? Australia needs a large and sustained government investment in women's job creation, which could begin by expanding public services. Valuable, important care work should also be publicly funded through lifting income support payments. 
We need to boost wages in feminized industries, allow sectoral or industry-wide collective bargaining, have more flexible work rights and 10 days paid domestic violence leave. And perhaps the most important is stronger parental leave entitlements for both men and women and the introduction of universal free public childcare. For a country with so much wealth and a long tradition of equality and fairness, Australia's poor gender equality record should spur the whole country to action, no matter their gender.